This lesson is for section 14.5. We're going to be looking at geometric sequences in series. Uh, specifically, we're going to find terms or the common ratio for a geometric sequence, and we're also going to be looking at the sum of finite or infinite geometric series. So uh, we'll be doing partial sums as well as finding what a, se a series might converge to. So let's start with the definition of a geometric sequence. It's also known as a geometric progression. Now, this type of sequence is one that, in order to move from one term to the next, you have to multiply by the same value for each successive term. So in other words, that same number is multiplied to each previous term. Now, we call that, that multiplier the common ratio, r, and we denote that with r. So this is the number that we're multiplying each successive term by. Now, the next sentence here says a geometric sequence is actually an exponential function, just like an arithmetic sequence is um, a linear function, a geometric sequence is an exponential function. y equals a times b to the x is that general uh, form for an exponential function. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But first, let's talk about what the common ratio is here in these two examples. So if we look at the first uh, sequence here, I have a geometric sequence because to get to the next term here, I have to multiply by 2. And I continue to multiply each term by 2 in order to get to the next term. So that common ratio here is 2. In the second question, or in the second sequence here, the terms are descending. Uh, we can still find that common ratio. It might not be, you know, popping out to you as quickly. But in order to find that common ratio, you you can just take the second term and divide that first term. So negative 27 divided by 81 gives me negative one third. So that common ratio here is negative one third. Now, here's the uh, formula to find the nth term of any geometric sequence. And rather than memorize it, I want you to understand where it's coming from again, because I think it, it, it just helps you a lot. Notice how similar it looks to our exponential, right? We have an output, a of n, that's like our y output, is equal to um, our a value here, let's keep that a, times b to the x. Here we have a sub 1 times our multiplier, the common ratio, to the n minus 1, where n is our input. Okay, and x here would be our input. Now, very, very similar, but where does this come from? So consider this first sequence here. Now, I would start with a sub 1 is equal to 1. Now, to get to the second term, I have to take 1 and multiply that by 2. Then, to get to the next term after that, I would take that previous number, a sub 2, and I would then multiply it by another 2. And then, I would take to get a sub 4, I would take my last a sub 3 and multiply that by another 2, right? So really what we're looking at is a sub 1, then a r, a sub 1 r, then a sub 1 r squared, then a sub 1 r cubed, and so on. So the reason why your formula looks the way it does, where it takes that first term and then multiplies it by a multiplier that's raised to exactly n minus 1 terms is because we start with our ratio, the common ratio, being raised to the 0 power. Okay, It's very similar, I guess, in the, in the sense of what happens with that binomial coefficient, too, from the previous section. Um, but that's where that, that uh, formula is coming from. So here we go. Let's start actually applying this. Find the 16th term of 1, negative, two, negative root 2, and 2. So let's find our, it's a geometric sequence, let's find our common ratio. To find that common ratio, you're just going to take the second term and divide it by the first term. And we get negative root 2. And we know that if we multiply this term by negative root 2, we should end up with 2. And in fact, we do end up with a positive 2. So we do know that our common ratio here is uh, negative root 2. So the 16th ter term, a sub 16, should be the first term. 1 multiplied by that common ratio raised to the 15th power. Remember, n minus 1. So if I want to simplify this, I know that this value overall will be uh, negative. So this is going to be negative 2 raised to the 15 halves. This is 2 to the 1 half power. So a sub 16, the 16th term, is negative 2 raised to the 15 halves. Now, in number 2, um, I would like, like you to try that one on your own. It's really similar to number 1. Uh, just check with the key. Now, number 3 is similar to some questions that we saw in the arithmetic sequence section. So here it says, find the fifth term of a geometric sequence if the fourth term is 4 and the sixth term is 6. So let's write out what we know. It might look like it's limited information, but uh, we can at least write out what we know. So we know that a sub 4 is 4. We also know that a sub 6 is 6. 
Now, I want to um, just write out in general what that term actually indicates. Well, I know that that term is supposed to equal a sub 1 multiplied by our multiplier, r, raised to the n minus 1 power, raised to the third. 6 should be our a value, a sub 1, multiplied by r to the fifth power. Okay, so now we're basically just solving a system here. So let's take a look at 4 equals a sub 1 r cubed. Now, if I solve for a, I end up with 4 over r cubed. And if I then substitute this value in over here, I end up with an equation 6 equals 4 over r cubed times r to the fifth. So 6 equals 4r squared. Divide out that 4. Take the square root of both sides. So we have positive or negative root 3 over 2. So we actually have two possible multipliers here. Okay, our, our common ratio could be the positive or negative square root 3 over 2. Now, since it's asking for the fifth term, I would take my fourth term, 4, and multiply it by positive root 3 over 2 or negative root 3 over 2. Okay, so we have negative 4 root 3 over 2 or this positive 4 uh, root 3 over 2. Okay, so. Um, I, I think there's another easier kind of slicker way of solving this uh, that I, I particularly like as well. If we take 4 equals a r cubed and 6 equals um, a r to the fifth. Let's just divide these two equations here, right, so that I get 4 over 6 equals um, a r cubed over a r to the fifth. And then you can see here that the, these a's will cancel out. You have 1 over r squared equals 4 over 6. I want to take the reciprocal first, but basically you see that I get right back to where we started when we were solving that system before. Okay, so just another way for you to solve this. Let's work on number 4. Okay, here it says the fourth term in a geometric sequence is 4 thirds, and the seventh term is 32 over 81. Find the first term. Okay, so we have to make sure that we answer this original question. All right, so um, a sub 4 is going to equal 4 thirds. And our seventh term, a sub 7, is 32 over 81. All right, now, um, I know that a sub 4, our 4 thirds, should equal our first term multiplied by our common ratio raised to the third power. I also know that 32 over 81 should be our first term multiplied by our common ratio raised to the sixth power. So I can solve here for a. So if I solve for a and isolate this, I end up with 4 thirds um, I'm sorry, 4 over 3 r cubed, right? So I just divide out that r cubed here. Now I can substitute this value in over here so that I end up with an equation 32 over 81 is equal to 4 over 3 r cubed multiplied by r to the sixth. And if we simplify here, we have 32 over 81 is equal to 4 thirds r cubed. Now, to solve, I'm going to multiply by 3 fourths on both sides. Okay, and that'll cancel out here. So I have r cubed is equal to, let's see, this is 27, 8, so 8 27ths. All right, now, r cubed equaling 8 27ths. Now, there, there's no way that we can um, have a negative value here um, for our uh, r value. Like before, we had two two possibilities, but here we won't. If we cube a negative, we won't get uh, positive eight twenty seven. So that means r is just the cube root of eight over twenty seven. Positive cube root of eight over twenty seven, and so we end up with two uh, thirds. So our our common ratio here is two thirds. We need to make sure we answer the first question here, which says find the first term. So now I can simply plug in that two thirds here to solve for a. So a sub 1, my first term is equal to 4 thirds, multiplied by 2 thirds cubed. So 4 thirds um, times 8 over 27. We end up with, let's see, this is 8 ninths. So 4 divided by that 8 ninths ends up being 9 halves. So my first term, a sub 1, is 9 over 2. Okay, next up, we're going to be finding partial sums of geometric series. So here's the formula to find a partial sum. So this is for uh, an, a finite series, okay? Now, the reason why it's for a finite series is because any 
sequence, like for example here. Um, if we continue to multiply by 2, this is just going to get larger and larger, so it would be sort of silly to find the sum of the entire series. So here's for a finite um, sequence, okay? So we're finding the first five terms, the sum of the first five terms here. Now we, we need to find our common ratio. Our common ratio here would be 2, because each term here is multiplied by 2 to get to the next. So I'm going to use this formula, so our partial sum S sub 5 here is going to equal a sub 1, 1, multiplied by 1 minus 2 to the 5th power. All over 1 minus our rate, which is 2 again. And if I simplify here, I get 1, min 1 times 1 minus 32, all over negative 1. Then simplifying here, I get positive 31. So if you wanted to find each of these terms, um, just to double check, you know, the next term would be 8, and the next term that would be 16. If you wanted to add those up, you should end up with 31, and in fact, you do. Okay, I'd like you to try number 6 on your own. I'm going to work on 7 with you, um, and then we'll finish up with number 8 before we move on to uh, a special case. So um, in number 7, when finding the first five terms here, we need to know, or, I'm sorry, the sum, right? It's the partial sum, so S sub 5. We need to know what our a value is, which we do. It's negative one half. We also need to know what our common ratio is, so that we can raise that to the fifth power. Okay, and then we're going to divide by one minus that common ratio. So let's work on what that common ratio is. Um, it might not jump out at you at first, but it's negative three fifths. Now, if you if you can't tell what that is right away, um, just take the second term, three tenths, divide it by the first term, negative one half, which is really like multiplying by the reciprocal. So we end up with negative three-fifths, okay? So I'm going to replace that R value here with a negative three-fifths. Now, this is a little tricky because of the, uh, the negative involved. So if we, Q, or I'm sorry, if we take this to the fifth power, we're going to get a negative value multiplied out here by that negative value. So really, this is ending up being a positive three to the fifth over five to the fifth, okay? And here, uh, same thing, this is going to end up being positive because that double negative here, so we're really adding that three-fifths. Okay, so let's work on simplifying now. So I'm going to take uh, negative one-half here, and then I'm going to keep this as three to the fifth and five to the fifth, because I don't really care about that quite yet, um, divided by eight-fifths. Now, I want to clean this up so that I bring this to the numerator, which is really going to be like multiplying by the reciprocal. So I have negative five-sixteenths multiplied by one plus three to the fifth, and 5 to the 5th. And then this is much easier, I think, th to put right into your calculator. So if you want to put this into your calculator, I would add 1 plus 3 to the 5th over 5 to the 5th, and then go ahead and multiply it by negative 5 sixteenths. So we end up with negative 421 over 1250. Okay, next up is number 8 here. And I, I know it looks a little bit more confusing because it's using sigma notation, but really all that this means is saying, find the sum of the first six terms um, when you have this rule here. Now, what we need to do to find the sum, let's take, since we're finding the sum of the first six terms, we first need to find a sub 1. We also need to know what our ratio is, our common ratio, so that we can raise that to the correct uh, value. All right, so let's take a look at what this, this actually means. You're taking 2 thirds and you're multiplying it however many times raised to k plus 1 power. So really, your ratio is actually just 2 thirds. So, if I substitute this in here, so 2 thirds raised to the nth power, and then 1 minus 2 thirds in the denominator. So now let's work on finding a sub 1. So our first term, remember, this notation just means you're going to plug in k equals 1 to find your first term. So this is 2 thirds to the second power, and we get 4 ninths. So a sub 1 is just 4 ninths. So let's fill in that. All right, and now um, since I have going to the uh, sixth term here, I'm going to erase that and raise that to the sixth power, okay? So now I'm working on simplifying here. Um, I'd like you guys to try this one on your own since it's so similar to uh, what we did over here in number seven. So go ahead and simplify and then check with the key. Okay, so what we were working on was for a finite series. Now, there are special cases though. If your common ratio is between negative one and one, um, an infinite geometric sequence will have a finite sum, and that's because it converges to a certain uh, value, okay? When you are looking at an infinite geometric series, so for example here, 
Okay, I'm not asking you to find um, through a certain term, right? That would be a finite series. I'm asking you to find the sum of the entire um, infinite geometric series here. And in this case here, I see that uh, symbol up top, which is saying my upper limit is infinity. So I'm not bounded here, unlike I was in number eight, right? This, the only difference here is that in number eight, I was uh, using a six for the upper limit. Okay, so when you have um, a convergent series, and it's called convergent because eventually you're going to arrive at just one number, um, you end up using this formula here. Okay, uh, so let's take a look. If we were going to find the, the sum of this infinite series here, we're going to use a sub 1, 1, and divide it by 1 minus our rate. Now our rate here is just 2 thirds, right? Each term is multiplied by 2 thirds, so we get 1 over 1 third, which is 3. So if I continue to add values to this, um, they're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, right? So if I keep multiplying this by, by 2 thirds, I get uh, 8 27ths, um, and then 24 80 firsts, and so on. And if I continue to add these values, well, I don't get any uh, bigger than 3. I get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to 3. The sum is actually 3 when I reach an infinite number of terms. Um, in number 10, we still need to find a sub 1. Um, so a sub 1, remember, is found just by taking 2 thirds, raising that to the second power, because k is equal to 1 here. And we end up with 4 ninths. So we have 4 ninths over 1 minus our rate, 2 thirds. So 4 ninths over 1 third ends up giving me, uh, let's see, 12 ninths, so 4 thirds. Okay, now in number 11 and in number 12, I think it's a little bit trickier to find what the uh, common ratio is here. Now if you look, each term here is being multiplied by another uh, 1 over 1.01. Okay, so that is your, your common ratio here. So what I'd like you guys to do is try uh, number 11 and number 12. All you need to do is figure out what your a sub 1 is. Um, in both cases, you actually are given it. Okay, we found our common ratio already. Simplifying this is a little bit tricky. Uh, you can use a calculator for this one. Do not use a calculator here for number 12 though, okay? So check your answers with the key. Um, that's the end of the lesson. Hopefully you understand the difference between when you have an infinite series as opposed to here where we have a partial sum because I'm specifically asking you for only the, the numbers, you know, up through the fifth term here, okay? All right, I'll see you in class tomorrow.